and we are live welcome everyone to another live stream um this is the regularly scheduled live stream every monday wednesday friday um right around this time 12 p.m pst or 7 p.m utc usually 30 minutes late because i'm <laughs> i'm just like not on time but um welcome uh, i've got everything settled now so i have like all the time in the world to to do the stream and walk through like questions and all kinds of stuff with you guys. Um, so yeah, uh, as usual, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays are the streams uh, for me personally, myself. And then uh, usually we go through Bitcoin, Ethereum and Bitcoin dominance, all TA. And then we do kind of from top to top down, right? Um, largest market cap, mid cap, low cap. Um, what's the trending narratives? Um, is there anything specifically interesting uh, right now that I'm looking at? Uh, and then in the end, we do Q and A's. So yeah, that's the usual format. And uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. I see some people already in. Uh, we are live on our uh, YouTube and Twitter, so both uh, the Virtual Bacon and uh, Bacon Dow accounts, as well as Discord. So if you want to follow along and ask more questions after the stream, make sure you join our Discord link in everywhere. I think. Uh, description so yeah let's do it um let me bring up the screen and let's do bitcoin analysis first okay so here we have bitcoin um as you can tell from the title so bitcoin is still ranging right uh this is the weekly chart and uh paints has a really clean picture here right because where are the weekly closes before, right? That has Bitcoin closed at the highest levels. That was just around 60K. And then uh, let me bring up the magnet right here around 51 and then 43. So three levels to pretty much give us all the context we need, which is as long as we close above and say above 60K and see a bounce here, this is straight up price discovery. And super extremely bullish case right um a little bit more conservative would be okay looking at 52k 53k right as a um first like very significant bounce level to watch right um even if we come down back into this range a read has something like uh 52 53k that would still be very very bullish right because this move we had thus far is a series of higher highs and higher lows. Uh, not only on weekly, but daily, it's much more clear, right? Where we've had uh, since the 30K bottom. Can I just, come on. Uh, let me remove this drawing here. So brush, 30K bottom, right? And then uh, even in, this smaller move here, right? Series of higher highs and higher lows. And then we had, um, if you're into alley waves, this is also very much like one, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four is a very complex wave, right? And then five, and then we had an ABC correction, right? Now we're back in. So uh, regardless, the higher highs and higher lows is very, very clear, right? With you could say this is higher high, higher low, um, higher high, higher low. And then in the medium term, right, we had first higher high, first higher low, second higher high now. So as long as this move, right, whether it bounces from here, from here, or even from here, doesn't really matter because as long as it respects 43K, and prints a higher high above the previous higher, uh, higher low above the previous higher low, this, this would still be a uptrend in the long term. I would say this is already long term because this is lasting uh, three months now, right? So this tells us that Bitcoin is in a very, very good spot, very safe spot as well, right? Um, if you just Google like uptrend, mm, higher lows, right? Uh, and look at the image. 
uh, just for a quick reminder, right? Something like this and a bit more um, practical levels is something like this, where you have the higher highs and higher lows and the invalidation level sits at the higher low, but usually price doesn't even reach the last higher high and just bounces from there. So um, looking at this here, where's the previous higher high? That's at 51.5, 52K, right? On the daily, precisely. So very, very bullish uh, case would be if we bounce from 60K, right? A, a bit more conservative, but still very bullish would be a bounce from 52K, which is the previous higher high. This would still be very bullish. Um, yeah, and then the key level that we absolutely need to hold above the bottom line is 43, right? That's pretty much all you need to see here. Um, and then I'm sure if you bring up the uh, textbook like indicators for EMA, right? Uh, just on 21 weekly, right? That's right within this range. And if we start dipping, right, as we get close to 43, this weekly will probably be close to 43 as well. And then same as 200 daily, it's very likely to be within these two ranges, right? So, so far, really, really positive uh, for Bitcoin, right? Uh, let me just see if we have uh, any problems with sound at all. Nobody's complaining, so we're probably good. Okay, and yeah, so that's that. That's for Bitcoin. And when I say Bitcoin is ranging currently, it's ranging... You see these past three weekly candles, all closed technically above 60K, right? Even though it's sideways, they are closing above 60K, which means we're technically consolidating above technically previous all-time high right around there. So this is super bullish. Um, this uh, from October 20th to pretty much the past 12 days or so. Um, this here has given us a great opportunity where Bitcoin is just consolidating before price discovery. And then this has given a, a really good spot for ELTS to have a brief run. Now, as long as this con continues to go sideways, something like this, ELTS will have a great time. Um, but it is very, very important to keep in mind that um, I would say on a daily chart, once we clearly break here, like 64, 65K, enter into price discovery, alts will quickly fall in line and start to underperform and start to pull back against Bitcoin. It's just inevitable. It has to happen every time uh, that Bitcoin has actually seen explosive growth. Just like um, right here, this move, and right here, this move, um, I'm quite sure that both moves seem like alts not really outperforming. Uh, we can try to bring up the chart here uh, with a comparison to BTC.D. Might slap myself in the face here because I'm not too sure. I haven't checked this before, but yeah. So here you see uh, dominance rose a little bit. Um, maybe I can pop this up. Um, move to into left scale, right? Yeah, this is much clearer. So you see from July 20th to about July 30th, that 10 days, you see Bitcoin dominance rising, right? So this was reverse all season, else left, uh, lost value against Bitcoin. Here, same thing, right? From October 1st to October 20th, when Bitcoin had a major rally, right? When it actually breaks out into a new uptrend, in this uh, orange line here, you also see Bitcoin dominance rising, right? So currently, because Bitcoin is consolidating, we are seeing alts run, but, uh, and I, I do have a lot of alts right now, but don't get mistaken. And if you are trying to chase these kind of rotations, then definitely watch Bitcoin every single day, right? Because the moment that it breaks above 64, 65, 66K, right? That does something like this. Alts will start to 
underperform Bitcoin. Probably will still go up against dollar, but probably will lose value against Bitcoin. So definitely pay attention. Um, that's not to say, oh, else are going to be bearish. No, no, very much the contrary. It's when this happens, you want to be positioned in Bitcoin where uh, Bitcoin runs very quickly. And then once Bitcoin starts doing these kind of consolidation moves, that's the time you get into alts. Uh, yeah, so that's the context we need right now to know what to be positioned in, which is currently Bitcoin is consolidating. Alts are starting at, are seeing a short term run. So I am in alts right now, but if this happens right at any time where Bitcoin breaks out, I'll just have to shift a lot of the uh, alts that are in profit into Bitcoin. So that's um, yeah. If you are watching this stream and you are trying to do this, you have to at least like on a daily basis know okay has Bitcoin broken out yet? If you're not ready for that then you should just be kind of holding Bitcoin and alts um, in proportional value uh, at current time. Because over, let's say, one month to three months period, Bitcoin and alts will all go up, right? And because Bitcoin is less volatile, you should just hold like maybe 30% Bitcoin, like 20% ETH, and then rest like in many, many alts. And just not try to rotate. Uh, that's that's a lot fair, right? If you not if you're not aware of what Bitcoin is doing on a daily basis, then that's what you should be doing. But for me personally, because I this is what I do, so um, this is uh, yeah how I'm looking at it right now. So that's the context we need. Uh, moving on to Ethereum. Very very strong. Um, Ethereum is currently so I actually break out above previous all time high now. So, yeah, um, would not be surprised if Ethereum just like starts to actually accelerate here. Um, yeah, not much to say. Uh, Bitcoin is consolidating, Ethereum is largest altcoin. Um, it's the first to run whenever Bitcoin consolidates. So, I would explain this move quite a, quite a lot. Um, yeah, not much to say, honestly, like you shouldn't be trying to trade this to be quite frank with you. Um, just like the Bitcoin breakout above previous all time high, right around 64, 65 K. Um, yeah, I would say how I would be taking this is if I'm mostly in alts, I wouldn't be holding ETH. Um, but if I'm doing like a one to three months kind of balanced portfolio, then I would say for the main holding positions, I would do a break a breakdown of Bitcoin and ETH. And then the rest of the alts are individually like much smaller allocations in my portfolio. Um, yeah, you shouldn't try to time this. Just kind of especially now that it's above all time high, like you don't want to be in a position where um, you are buying the breakout above all time high. And if it does something like, like this, where it retests kind of the previous higher high here, right? Something like that, that you would be super sweaty. That's not the chart's fault. The, the analysis here is very clear. It's in an uptrend, right? With ever since down here, 1.9k right uh higher not even higher high there but break of this uh neckline right and higher high higher low so now another higher high right this might bounce from the previous higher high here uh, it just needs to stay above the bottom line which is 2.9k so very clear uptrend in a medium to long term time frame right but that doesn't mean you can like take leverage on it and just like go all in because it will continue doing stuff like this, right? That's what that's what uptrends look like. So every time that it does one of these swings, if you are just sweaty, that um, it does a something like fifteen percent kind of 
short-term swing. If even that makes you sweaty, then that just means you are not doing it correctly. Like with such a large market cap type of uh, asset, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, you shouldn't be that overexposed. Uh, there is very, it's very difficult for you to be overexposed like that anyways. Um, yeah, so I would say as long as you are not doing leverage on Bitcoin and Ethereum, and it's like less than 50% of your portfolio, I, I, I don't see any way you can lose on this. Um, yeah, like, cause the bottom line here is like 2.9K and then that's like, what, 25%, 30%, right? Even if it drops 30% tomorrow, let's say I have 50% of my portfolio in ETH, drops 15, uh, 30% tomorrow, that's only a 15% loss on my entire portfolio. I would not be sweating that. So I don't think there is any way you can lose on this unless you are overexposed, unless you are doing leverage, which is the worst thing you can do right now. For Bitcoin and Ethereum, absolutely do not use any leverage whatsoever right now because things are about to get very, very volatile, right? Um, Ethereum is now above previous all-time high. Bitcoin could at any time break above previous all-time high. Once that happens, the volatility will tick up, right? The swings will get more and more violent as the run accelerates. That's the worst time you want to be leveraged. So, yeah, if you are super into kind of longer term, just continue holding and DCAing, whether it's like swinging up, swinging down, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, right? Ethereum, bottom line, 2.9K at a higher low. Bitcoin, bottom line, 43K, previous higher low. That's literally all you need to know right now if you are holding Bitcoin and Ethereum. So, yeah. Um, Look at the bottom lines and don't do leverage. And I could, I can't see any way you can lose. Um, yeah. Um, okay, moving on to Bitcoin dominance. Yeah, so I was betting on this move happening um, kind of a week and a half ago. It's not happening. It clearly is not happening. Uh, so... This is why like, I've been tweeting a lot of altcoins. I've been posting a lot of um, altcoin plays in our Discord as well. So um, yeah, just got to not be stubborn. I still think very much the breakout here will happen, right, eventually. But clearly that wasn't like this. It might be like this right here. It might be a revisit to 40% before it ticks up. I don't know, but very clearly um, now is not the time to be stubborn and say, I only want to hold Bitcoin, right? Um, because Bitcoin is consolidating, it's ranging, all coins are pumping. So I'm in alts right now. Um, yeah, that's that. Uh, so. Now let's clean up some of these levels. Um, I think this 47.5 is from weekly. Yeah. So this is from the weekly chart, 47.5%. I am quite, yeah, I'm still in the camp that this 47.5% will break eventually um, when Bitcoin really has its run, but it's not happening right now so yeah i'm in alts and i think um this now just is telling me that we are in a short-term alt season right so definitely a good time to be holding alts um but again if you are if you have a most of your ex portfolios exposure in altcoins right now that is a bet on short-term alt season, right? Which is you are betting that Bitcoin will not um, come and ruin the party, or at least you are, um, if your portfolio is mostly altcoins, like more than 50%, it is a bet basically on the fact that you can react very quickly if Bitcoin pumps, if Bitcoin breaks above previous all-time high, right? So two ways you can do this, right? If you are not watching Bitcoin and 
you're saying that, oh, yeah, I'm okay with Bitcoin and Ethereum and Bitcoin dominance like running. And uh, you're trying to do like one to three months. Then your portfolio shouldn't be more than 50% alts. It should be like what I said before, like 30% Bitcoin, something like 20% ETH. So you have that exposure, right, that will balance your portfolio out. Even if Bitcoin has a short term run, it doesn't matter, right? Because in the short term, then your Bitcoin stash and Ethereum stash will run, your alt stash will lag behind a bit. But then, like when Bitcoin consolidates, your alt stash will, will catch up. So it's very balanced. You don't need to worry. For me personally, I like to be positioned heavily in either Bitcoin, Ethereum when they run, or in mostly alt when Bitcoin is consolidating, right? So if you are doing it that way, in the second way that I just described, like me, then you have to know when Bitcoin dominance is in a short-term downtrend um, and when Bitcoin is in the short-term uh, either ranging or it's if it's uptrending, right? Currently, it's ranging. So, um, yeah, I'm in alts right now, um, but I every day I check like two, three times on Bitcoin dominance, whether it prints any sort of like kind of reversal pattern like that, and whether if Bitcoin has broken above all time high, right? So that's the premise that gives myself like the, the kind of confidence to, to react in case Bitcoin breaks above all time high at any time. Because as we speak, right, Bitcoin at any time could break up, right? And when that happens, I just need to take profits from the altcoins that I'm winning in. Um, and whether I move majorly into majorly into Bitcoin or 50-50, I have to make a move, right? Um, yeah, so if you are mo uh, more than 50% in alts right now, you have to watch what Bitcoin is doing. But if you are, let's say, half in Bitcoin and Ethereum, half in alts, then you don't actually need to worry about this too much. Um, yeah, so that's, that's that, um, yeah, overall, this is not a time to be stressed, uh, and not a time to be bearish in any way whatsoever, uh, until the signs prove us otherwise, right? So yeah, it really, really is important to have actually an up only mindset right now, um, and just try to find the way that works for you, whether that's monitoring Bitcoin and trying to be mostly positioned in alts and then rotating back into bits, Bitcoin rotating back into alts again, or just have like Bitcoin and Ethereum at all times and then do alts with the rest of your portfolio, right? Just trying to work, uh, find what works for you and just also assume that this is up only period, right? Uh, okay. So that's that. And then let's move on to um, what else? Let me think. Um, yeah, I would say this is like short term opportunities. Current gems, let's say, right? Um, so a couple things that I am looking at right now. So uh, of course, there's the, there's the, the usual like things that i posted on my twitter right so um the pinned uh message on my twitter that's the kind of portfolio breakdown that i see like really uh, thesis catalyst and ta driven kind of plan for the next uh like three months right after btc pump especially so i always monitor these Right, Joel signups, ice spell. These are like cross chain and AVAX narrative. Ohm time tempo clima. These are um, uh, Olympus forks. Uh, Dot uh, moonbeam glimmer Akala Astar. These are um, polka dot pair chains. And then we have parallel NFT and Prime. Um, this is uh, the largest like NFT game. We have Grow, Chess, Ribbon, Lemma. These are the stru structure products narrative that I'm really into for DeFi. And then there's a couple more like uh, Ronin, Immutable X, Engine Infinity. This is like Meta Metaverse Place, uh, GMX, Curve Convex, uh, Near Ecosystem, Frax Shares. I would also add like Mirror Circle uh, here. This is a LBP that's up and coming. 
yeah, so this thread is like super good. This is kind of um, what I watch, uh, what I want my portfolio to be comprised of. Now, this doesn't mean that I just like throw money at all, all of them at the same time. They do fluctuate individually, right? Currently, um, Grow is super cheap. Ribbon is super cheap. Um, Joe is pretty cheap. Spell has gone up a lot. Clima is really cheap because it's on a pretty major correction right now. Um, Spell and Ice are pumping, like no tomorrow. Ice is like um, just about to launch. And Spell is like just Spell. <laughs> they're, they're just insane. So... Um, it's a good time to kind of rebalance from Spell and Ice, I would say. Um, Synapse, also very decently cheap. Um, Polkadot ecosystem with Akala, Astar, uh, Moonbeam. These are launching like the next week. Um, at least the, the crowd loans will start. Uh, so watch those. Um, yeah, so that's the main gems, I think. Um, one individual gem is like uh, this one that we talked about yesterday, uh, Mirror Circle. This is a kind of like YGG, like very, very similar to YGG, um, but also super big backers. They're in all the Play Doran games. Um, they're doing their sale, public sale on LBP. And... Um, this is launching actually tomorrow until Friday. So check this out. Um, I would say, yeah, uh, let's see if there's a LBP. Yeah, here. So my target for this LBP is at least below 50 cents. I would say like something like 30 to 40 cents would be probably my target to, um, to buy in. So here is the uh, what is it? LBP details here, right? From tomorrow till Friday, sale for three days. Um, they have a, yeah, they're selling like 7.5% of their entire token supply, which is very good, very fair. And um, every uh, early investor is locked for the first six months and very long vesting. I think it's like three years vesting. So very, very long vesting, uh, same as the team. So. Really good tokenomics, actually. Um, I definitely would not ape in at $1 because uh, keep in mind, this is 1 billion total supply. So you wouldn't want to get in this at 1 billion uh, fully diluted valuation. But something like below 500 million, let's say three, 400, pretty decent for public sale price. Yeah, pretty decent. So definitely watch this. I'll be like actively participating tomorrow uh, until Friday. Um, let's see what else is there. Uh, I think Clima is still on a dip. Let's just go through those, right? Clima, uh, Clima has been down quite a bit actually. Yeah. So, um, charting the market cap is the way to do it. Uh, market cap went as low as 500 million. So this is, I would say, a really good opportunity here. Um, how much did price go down? Yeah, price has gone down to like pretty much listing price. So also really good. Um, not much to say there. I would say for market cap here, uh, if I can chart this. CoinTrader.pro charts, maybe. Might be able to chart this market cap. Clima, uh, USD, shit. Clima, Clima DAO, no. Come on. Well, that sucks. Uh... Did I type it wrong? No, I didn't. Anywhere else I can chart this? Yeah, Dex Tools. Chart this on Dex Tools. Bum, bum. Mm, Polygon. Uh, 
climber. Sure. Uh, do this. Uh, cool. And then pump this out. Let's do like four hour. I hate this big candle here. It ruins the whole fun. Uh, log. Yeah. Um, probably line. Mm, yeah, line chart for this. And then I want RSI. This volume, though. Uh, I need to scale this volume. How do I scale this? Can I, can I, how do I ignore this first bar? That's so dumb. Uh, hello? No. Left scale. Yeah. Bump this up. Oh my God. Ah. Okay. Here we go. That's more useful that there this is on four yeah so here so price downtrend right um whereas see volume declining and rsi haven't reverted yet but let's do like a hourly Yeah, I wouldn't be in this yet. Uh, this was a good spot to enter for bounce. You see the RSI divergence here, right? Price going down, RSI going up, right? Price uh, specifically lower lower lows, uh, whereas RSI higher lows. And you see volume declining. This means the downwards momentum was was going down, right? But uh, we did make a new low here, right? So that means we got to kind of zoom it out a little bit more. Yeah, I would say probably one more drive down. Um, where was the chart, main chart? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Log chart is fucking us up here. Regular is better probably with um, candles. Huh. This chart is very different from what's on CoinGecko here. Right? Very different. Why is that? <laughs> uh, What's the low on CoinGecko here? Oh, that's the market cap chart. Right, it makes sense. Makes sense. Price, yeah. So one six and then one three. What was the low here? One six, one three. Okay, so that's about right. So usually um, there's a pattern called three drives, which is um, when you see these kind of lower lows that seems to be every time there's a bounce, um, but volume is declining, right? Usually the reversal happens after three drives. So yeah, I would expect another drive down here maybe. Um, and especially because we haven't seen like something like RSI really tick back uh as this right low here and this low here you see rsi also made a low so not a good sign um 
of this completing, I would ideally like to see something like another drive down. We print another lower low, but here we see a divergence where this RSI comes down, but bounces and makes a higher low. This divergence will be kind of where I enter. Um, so I'd say maybe another dip to 1K. That would be a really ideal trade uh, for me to enter. Um, yeah, not saying this will necessarily happen, but what I'm saying is like, yes, it's cheap right now, but entering right here is a bit high risk for me personally. Um, yeah, so I'm not I'm not buying here just yet. But yeah, let me remove all the drawing. If we see something like this, uh, not like that, but something like this where we made a new lower low, right? And start to bounce and very clear price uh, downtrend. But on RSI, we make a hard low and start to bounce. Uh, sorry, precisely at this tick, start to bounce. And RSI make a hard low. If this happens, this right here will be my entry. Um, hasn't happened, might not happen. And if it doesn't happen, I'll just not, not touch it. Um, but if it does happen, I think this will be a super good opportunity. So yeah, watching this for the next probably day or so. Yeah, um, we'll see soon enough. Okay, so that's Klima. Uh Okay. What else is on my radar? So Grow Dow. This one is just like super cheap, honestly. Um, went as low as $14. What's the main market for this? I think it's Uni Sushi. Yeah, so I can chart it here as well. That's on ETH. Actually, Dex Guru might be better. Uh, I've Dex Guru might be actually better than Dex Tools. Uh, so you have one search. So if you look up grow here, pretty sure they have it. Yeah. Um, you see volume, liquidity, see all the trades. It's just super good. Um, yeah. So this is probably four hour. Yeah. Pop this out. Can I get an indicator on this? I cannot. Indicator, RSI. Yeah, this this is much clean, cleaner. Yeah. So, can I get a drawing tool? I cannot. Yeah, these guys don't like me. But drawing tool? No. Nothing. Okay. Um, this is a buy right here for Grow Dow. So you see price. Lower highs, RSI, higher highs, and especially at the, th uh, no, lower, lower lows and higher lows. And especially at the third drive, usually that's the point where the reversal confirms. Um, yeah, so growth out here, super good opportunity, I would say. Um, yeah. Not much else to say. Like it fits the narrative of structured products where um, you want to deposit, like let's say a stable coin or ETH, Bitcoin, whatever it is. And you just want very simple, but optimized to trade based on all the DeFi products out there, right? So if you have a stable coin, you don't want to bother with Comex, Yearn, Curve, Uni V3, whatever. You just put it into Grow DAO, right? And then based on each pool, based on like how much of their total um, stable coin like deposit there is, and they can deposit into different pools and try to get the optimized yields for each one, right? So you might have like 20 million of, uh, of like 
um, TBL that you can like put into Uni V3 that won't dilute everything. You can deposit some more into Curve that won't dilute the yield too much. That's what Rollout does, right? And they have this kind of protection mechanism where you have people that want to do more like leverage yield and you have people that want to have protected yield and the, the protected yield provide the leverage for the uh, leverage yield farmers for stable coins. And then the leverage yield um, people provide the protection for the um, protected yield, right? So the protected yield uh, vault has lower uh, yield, but their principle is always guaranteed, right? So that kind of product is what I call, what I would say structure products. Um, yeah, so GrowDAO is one, Ribbon is another. These things are, yeah, like super, super good. Uh, I think these things are just set to explode and especially right here at uh, for GrowDAO. Really good price as well. Um, so that's Bro. I would say Ribbon also fits that narrative. Let's look at Ribbon price here. Where is it listed? Uniswap and Gate. Why is it not? Uh, does it have? Does it not have Uni V three? Huh. Maybe I just copy the token address here. Yeah, that should work, right? Here. What the fuck? <laughs> that's that's weird. Um, it probably lost the Oracle or something. Yeah. Yeah, you see there were a lot of volume, but the platform kind of broke a little bit here. It lost the price Oracle. Um, so can't really chart that there. We'll chart that here. Yeah, so ribbon also looks really good. First higher low has been printed, technically speaking. I yeah, I think it's just no brainer at these valuations. Like it's just so low. Um, people have fought it long enough, right? With the divergence, um, whole fiasco. So many people were fighting out their own bags. Um, yeah, like people don't understand what this is. They think it's, oh, yeah, like people farm this and it's a uh, airdrop and oh, let's sell our airdrop because this is like going nowhere. What is this? They just, they just don't understand it. So that's great. Great opportunity for us. So, um, I would say anything under two dollars definitely accumulates just like DCA in, into ribbon. Uh, what else is there? That's currently cheap. Um, I'd say Joel still at two dollar fifty. Like this is kind of becoming a meme, but I'm. Oh yeah, one thing that I saw, uh, very very interesting, is um, where can I get the chart for this? Okay, it has market. So let's do trading view for this. And um, let's do Joel, USD, no, Joel, ah, fuck, okay. Dex Guru, Joel. Oh, wow, these guys are good. Yeah, okay. So there's that. Can I do two charts comparison? Um, doesn't look like it. <sighs> Chart X. So let me do one on the left, one more on the right. And Avalanche Network, um, AVAX charts, and this one, I need the Joel chart here. Okay. Yeah. 
Emax, Joel. Here. So this is very interesting, actually. And let's do daily for both. So, so you know how when AVAX first announced their uh, liquidity mining incentive, right, in August? It's like kind of right here. Uh, this is not a full chart, but Pangolin, Trader Joe. Wrap AVAX. What? Why does it not go back? That's mean. Whatever. Um, you see how these two charts are very similar um, since, yeah, since this August period, right? If you really zoom out to August 28, August 24, August 24, right? See how Joel has pretty much just been, Joel is the one here on the right, AVAX is the one on the left. So Yes, Joe hasn't really pumped that much, but what is that mostly because? What is that mostly due to? It's because AVAX ecosystem is undervalued. AVAX coin itself is undervalued. Um, and this chart is like actually super powerful because what this is telling me is that Joe is like pretty much a free way to get leverage position on AVAX ecosystem and AVAX coin itself. Um, and on top of that, it has its own narrative of being like, okay, what if the DEX really takes off and grows beyond AVAX ecosystem? So yeah, like I'm bullish on AVAX ecosystem. I'm bullish on AVAX coin itself. Um, and what I'm seeing for Joe here is kind of just holding Joe is like a two X long on AVAX. It's pretty much just that it's, it's been acting this way for the past three months or so. Um, yeah, that's what I would tell you. So very, very clean chart. And, um, yeah, if you're an AVAX fan, I, and I think it's only a matter of how much exp how much volatility you want. If you want a bit more volatile asset, just get Joel. If you want a bit less volatile, you get AVAX. Uh, and you can adjust kind of your portfolio breakdown with AVAX and Joel breakdown, and even like supply liquidity and farm uh, with decently high yield. Um, yeah, this is like this is how I'm playing it. It's just uh. Bet on the entire AVAX ecosystem, pretty much Joel. It's because it's it's just like it's pretty much leveraged AVAX. So uh, that's Joel. Um, I don't think its individual fundamentals even matter that much, even though it's super strong. But the only thing that it's really not has hasn't really given it like the real wings is just because AVAX is so undervalued right now. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, Signups, also good. It's right around $3.50. I don't think there's much to talk about there. I, a lot of people are accumulating signups. Um, if you just search on Twitter, like signups, accumulate, you'll see like people have dug into um, Etherscan and saw like, there's this guy that's like buying like 100k of signups like every hour for the past like week or so. It's just gone nuts. Um, so yeah, this is still by far the best bridge there is. So if you're into multi-chain, you've tried all the uh, Phantom, AVAX, Avalanche, Solana, Terra, Near, all these things, this is the best bridge um, by far. So why not bet on people needing to bridge, right? So this is no brainer. Um, what else? What else? Temple Dow. Temple Dow is about to come out. Um, this week, <laughs> they're tweeting memes. Um, 
yeah, their opening ceremony will be will require you to do some tasks within their Discord to like show that you understand the project. But aside from that, there's no whitelist. There's no there's nothing else that you need to do. Anyone can join. You don't need to be early. You don't need to know anyone. You just need to follow their announcements and they'll give you a guide to, to show that like, oh, you understand the project and you can contribute. Uh, you can buy Temple and Bond. Uh, so that's coming this week. Um, look out for that. So like the next four days. Mirror Circle. Um, Squid Dow is another thing. Um, Ohm Fork that I'm in. I think it's very undervalued. Um, that's it. I think that's that's all the stuff that I'm in. Uh, that I see like currently very like I can act on this week. But still, keeping an eye on everything that I mentioned in this. Oh yeah, also dot uh, pair chains, right? But we have to look at the actual numbers when the crowd loans come live to see like if it's overvalued or undervalued. Um, yeah, but definitely keep an eye on uh, this um, pin. Yeah, this is how I'm playing it. So yeah, let's move on to Q and A's. Uh, starting off with events chat. In Discord. I just about the squid. I read article that it dumped and I were in it. Did you exit before all that happened? No, you are in the wrong squid. Um, <laughs> there's a squid scam on BSC. It's completely different. Like I tweeted and tagged the one I'm in and what it is many times. Like if you just bought, if you just bought like a random ticker, I can't help you. It's, it's like, I, yeah, I saw the scam. Um, I tweeted many times that like squid is this, is this, is not the scam. And many people tag me like, hey, look, there's a scam on BSC. Like it's the scam. Why are you getting into this? I said, this is the wrong one. This is the right one. If you still got scammed, like I, I can't help you. Yeah, can't help you. Um, Anubis, they are contacting law enforcement now, uh, specifically Sisyphus. I check his Twitter like twice a day. Um, yeah, I think it's very likely that we can get our money back. Very likely. Better to stake or bond squid? Definitely stake. Bond is different from stake. Um, and I think currently the bond is not giving you um, profits, actually, because price has pumped too much. Um, so yeah, definitely stake is the better one right now. Any thoughts on metaverse narrative? It's good. It's good. We covered it a lot yesterday, right? Like pretty much for an hour. Um, a lot of the shit coins that you see pumping, like UFO, PYR, those will... I'm not in those because those are literally all-time high, but I think Mirror Circle is a decent chance to, to get in that. Again, in the metaverse narrative. I think stuff like um, Immunobax... Uh, even Axie, when Ronin comes out, um, and uh, what else? What else? Uh, Infinity. Um, yeah, early stuff that's really blue chip that people haven't talked about. I think those are good. Um, oh, there's this thing called um, what's it called? I don't think many people know about this, but there's this thing called uh, crypto unicorns. This one. I'd be surprised if anyone has heard of this. But this, I think Bitcraft is in this. Um, and they have already locked down their uni, uh, their MISO launchpad. Um, and this is a very big scale project. Um, I would say this could be similar caliber as, as Axie. But they haven't even done their pre-sale yet for their eggs. Genesis X. So if you're in the metaverse, this is one that I don't think many people even know. So I'm watching this. And they have a Genesis egg sale on November 15th. Meta Heroes pumped like 10x already. So that's that's up there with PYR and UFO. Um you can get in, you can chase more yield, but uh, it's it's pumped a lot. So yeah. Um 
just to add to the Joe TA enter yesterday at 2.29 at the bottom of descending trying descending wedge. Nice, nice. Uh, and used on U near eco, still good. I mean, here is kind of where you want to buy the dip if you're in, in near eco. Um, news is big. Near con, near con is this week, right? Yeah, so that doesn't mean like it's just gonna moon 100% like every day, but. This is kind of where you want to buy the breakout retest for near Yiko for like the refinance, uh, Paras, uh, Skyward, um, Octopus. Yep. When you're heavy on alts and want to be ready to cycle into BTC in case of bombs, do you stake, pull, EDC, or just hold? I stake. Why not? Doesn't really matter to me. I know what I have. Like, why would you only hold? I'm not gonna forget about it. I know exactly how many of each I have and which ones are at what price. Uh, yeah. Aurori, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aurori is another good one in their eco. Aurori just launched, right? I think so, mainnet. Do you think Tractor will have more utility? I don't know. I don't know. Or look at ice after PTC pumps. Yeah, yeah. Every Everything in the Twitter pin, yes. Light bone for charts earlier blinded me. <laughs> nice. It is on Solana's game to play to earn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know Meta Hero. Uh, it's good, but it's pumped like like I said, like 10x already, even from listing price. So dot breaking all time high right now. Yeah. Because parachain auctions are literally starting this week. Problems are starting this week. Do you have any opinion on Terra ecosystem? Good. Um, I don't have the energy to keep up on. Terra, Solana, Dot, Moon, Moon River, Moonbeam, like Cosmos, the Secret, you know, Avax, Phantom, <laughs> every single ecosystem. I, I just can't do all of them. I would lose track. Um, yeah, so it's good. Terra is great, but I just uh, I, I don't have the energy to do every single one. So near con over? Is it? Okay, maybe it's over. Um, Okay, let's check uh, YouTube, Twitter comments and questions. Let's see. see. Uh, yeah, but that is simple to say when consolidation happened, not when it is consolidating. Well, if someone can tell you that next week we are for sure going to consolidate, like, sure. Listen to them, but I can tell you nobody can give you that guarantee, right? So what you're asking of is literally impossible, right? So you cannot tell the consolidation and for how long, at what price before it happens, right? So I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. Like I would say trending period is a bit more obvious to tell. So here's what I would say, right? Um, how I would do it is, let's say you're watching Bitcoin and you wanna figure out when Bitcoin is trending, when Bitcoin is consolidating, so you can be in and out of belts. So trending periods are much more obvious. Consolidation periods are much more iffy. So. Once Bitcoin broke above uh, here, right? So it it made a higher high, made a higher low. It took out the previous higher high. This here was a period where you do, did not want to be in alts because you knew it was in an uptrend, even in the very short term, right? Um, now we are currently in a consolidation period, right? But once Bitcoin breaks above the previous higher high, now that would mean we are in a uh, trending period again because we have a higher high we're waiting for the next higher low that would be the rotate back into bitcoin now when will that happen i don't know right when will this consolidation period stop is that going to be a year is that going to be a week tomorrow one month nobody knows nobody can give you a guarantee for that but that's why you need to watch and react when this comes you know to rotate right 
like that's what it is so yeah i get what you mean that oh look like you didn't tell us we're gonna start consolidating right at 66k because i didn't know nobody could have known like that's that's a meme right um but what i can tell you is once higher highs have been taken out the trend will be clear and that's when we know for sure we're not consolidating and that's when you want to be in bitcoin but when you rotate into alts it's yeah it is pretty difficult um there's no doubt about that i i i cannot give you a very very active like very accurate um kind of signal every time and say oh look we touched 66k now i'm buying outs because the next two weeks we're going to be in out season like well that's very hard to say um yeah so I get what you mean, but mm, that's not what I'm saying I can do either, right? Uh, yeah. Mm. BTC on-chain analysis news. I don't really do that, so I can't tell you. Really, really hard to break 70k, 80k areas. Sure, yeah. Historically, the cycle ends in December. People are saying that this cycle will extend to March or June. What are your thoughts? I don't think it can end. I don't think it will end in December. Like, it would just be so explosive for the next two months because we're literally November 1st now. If it ends December 30th, we have 60 days. And what's the cycle top? I think the cycle top would at least be 100, 150k. So, what are we? Bitcoin is gonna two point five three x in two months. Like that's that's a bit of a stretch, right? So yeah, I, I I think it'll be a bit longer. Um, any updates on Nier? Are you still bullish despite the downturn? Of course, yeah. Um, but you just because it's good, it's bullish, doesn't mean like it's just gonna go straight up. So just gotta buy dips, right? And um, handle your position sizes um r and r of an ohm fork versus ohm sure so if you look at um uh, actually i made a tweet about this like just very very clearly uh let me bring that up so i can i don't have to redo it where are we here. So let me bring this up. So each ohm fork have a Doom Analytics dashboard, right? To to compare like the mark cap of the coin itself versus how much risk free value or what the um, ohm or squid or whatever else time is pegged to, right? Or or backed by. Um, in ohm's case, one each ohm is backed by one die, right? So that's the risk-free value, the, the supposed stable asset. So, so you see here, um, uh, actually, do, uh, Dune uh, Ohm. If you just Google Dune Ohm or Dune Dashboard Ohm, right, first result here, you see that um, these projects are backed not pegged because the real like floor price of one ohm is technically like this right so um the floor market cap of ohm is something like 160 million right because there are that many dies and st other stable coins in the treasury so if you take the market cap of ohm divided by this that's like uh 20x right 25x right so ohm is trading at like 25 times the uh um risk-free value or what the floor price is versus um if you look at the do analytics for something like squid which i think is very undervalued per this metric uh right squid's market cap is 110 million 
and the risk-free value is 23 million. So this is trading at like 4.2, less than 4.5, right? So almost trading at like 25 times floor price, whereas Squid is trading at like 4.5. That's the undervaluation, right, uh, that I'm seeing. So you can take the same r and comparison and apply it to time, clima, you know, um, zero to whatever, like Rome, MetroDAO, all of these other, other ones and see like how much risk-free value is in the treasury and how high of a premium the actual coin itself is trading at. A uh, pretty good metric to, to compare these ohm forks. Yeah, so that's that's what I do. Any short-term, long-term advice on Tractor? I think it's, it's just super cheap. Like it's 20 million. It's Trader Joe's official meme coin. Um, the main accounts haven't been talking about it. So yeah, I, I'm, I think this will, I'm betting on this to pump like in the next week or so. Um, if it doesn't, I will just have to kind of admit defeat because it, it's, it has to be a short-term pump. Um, it's not a long-term play because it's a meme coin, but yeah, I'm, I'm betting on that. Uh, so based on that analysis, you can adjust your position size as well, right? Yeah, so it should be a smaller position size. Uh, Ample fourth lending Aave, I've tried this. It's, it's not that innovative, to be honest with you. It's basically ohm on rari but like a way more way less productive link could get to link has been just like doing nothing so yeah i don't know i would not recommend holding link if you are a even blue chip holder right you still think that a layer one narrative is doing course um i don't really want to dig too much into the lower cap layer ones like Glitch, Kadana, uh, Hedera, Beam. I don't know. I think I have enough. Like, I'd rather just have Solana, Terra, Avax, Cosmos, Secret. I think these things will, these things are still haven't run parabolic. Most of them haven't. So, yeah. Um, Solana is pretty much the only one that has gone parabolic. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not. Like I don't want to have like twenty layer ones for what I want. I want a few that I'm convinced about, right? So I can dig into the ecosystem, know what it's doing. I can't follow twenty ecosystems and know which ones are doing what. That that's too much of a waste of time. Layer one narrative versus metaverse hype. Risk and reward are better on layer one IMO. Mm, I wouldn't say. Uh, if you're aping into like the shitcoin metaverses. Like your uh, UFO and PYR and MetaHero type of thing, yeah, it's pretty overextended. But if you are looking at stuff, I'm looking at like Mirror Circle, um, Infinity, you know, IMAX coming up, then those are pretty decent. I would say I, I'm personally positioned in both, right? Uh, Thor chain, mm, if I were to take any other bets aside from synapse in the multi-chain bridge narrative, I would take Thor chain, but I don't know it enough. I've never done never done a research into like what they're unique of uh, for. So yeah, I, I don't have any, but it's it's very good for multi-chain narrative. It's very big though, also. Um you rotate on pullback retesting previous all time high. Um, yeah, if we let's say we get a weekly close above sixty five k Bitcoin, um, that will pretty be pretty much be a break of all time high, right? New price discovery. I will probably rotate then, and on the daily, that will probably be a retest of the previous all time high. Yeah. Uh, exchange tokens, I don't know. I don't know, they, they aren't that hot. The only ones like BNB, like even FTT isn't doing that well. Uh, it's it's pretty slow. So, and BNB is like mostly because of BSD, not 
Binance Exchange. So yeah, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think Exchange token too hot right now. How's your daily routine like? Do you research all day? Do you once in a while? Like literally, it's like twelve hours a day. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah. I wake up. If I'm on my phone, I'm on Twitter. If I'm on the computer, I'm on Twitter. If I'm anywhere, I'm on Twitter. So <laughs> it's like literally twelve hours a day. If I'm eating, I'm 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 doing this on Twitter. So, um, what do you think of Samo? I saw you follow me on Twitter. Uh, it's a meme coin on Solana. It's like the dog coin on Solana. I don't have an opinion. It's pumped like way too much already. I think the dog hype is is very difficult to chase. Is there something fundamental that makes Ohm safer than a fork? No. Um, more money is in it. It has been around longer. Um, it has seen the test of time. It has had like two major corrections already, but it has not broken. Right. So that's what it is. Right. That's kind of comparing like, okay, what makes Bitcoin? No, no. Okay. That's, that's bad comparison. What makes, um, um, I don't have a good comparison because it's purely asset based, right? So it's, it's price history and market cap that makes it more, um, trustworthy because you can only trust code so far, right? If you compare the code of Ohm versus a fork, it's the same because it's a fork. So it's not like they're doing some they're, they just have different, better security practices. I, I, I don't know, but um, more money is in it, so people are put, willing to put their money where their mouth is. So that's that's a better sign than any, right? Because we're not like security researchers, right? So the CRO is just not doing anything yet. So uh, I don't know what this block is. I think it's a pretty hype meme coin. Like it's. I don't know if it's a meme coin, but a lot of people are talking about it. Like as a, I haven't looked into it. I don't even know what it is. You still bullish on Solana? Yeah, of course, of course. Top five coins or tokens to buy and hold for say ten years. Bitcoin and ETH. I don't. I don't have any other. If if you give me a time lock and say you have a trust, you can put whatever crypto, only crypto in there, and it. It, you can only open it for t in 10 years. I will only buy Bitcoin and ETH. I will not buy anything else. I do not trust anything else to not go to zero over 10 years. Yeah. I have no idea what this gimme is. I suggest you not spam your whatever that shit is, and I'm going to block you. Sorry, dude. Um, please, no shit coin chills. Yeah. Um, Okay, let's see if any other questions on Discord. Let's see. What do you think will happen to IMX Marketplace when, if ETH 2.0 is a success, regardless of gas fees? So, first off, ETH 2.0 is not really going to kill layer twos. You have to understand that, right? Because ETH 2.0, let's say it can do. 1,000, 5,000 transactions per second. I don't know what the scaling is, but um, you're talking specifically about sharding, right? So um, ETH 2.0 has sharding, but there are currently blockchains that already do sharding. Um, AVAX subnet is technically one, I would say. Um, I think near does sharding already, but still. Uh, and and also on Solana, you have uh, Solana is already like more scalable than sharding blockchains, right? But even so, on these networks, there are roll-up scaling solutions that are taking off, right? So the layer one scaling faster is not going to kill layer twos because you can always have faster, right? and better user experience. Like, it's not like it's going to be like infinitely fast. There is a limit. And it's not like 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 transactions per second is that powerful. Because in the last cycle, we have already had like 
um, Tron yields do like few thousand transactions per second, and that went nowhere. So yeah, like it's not really going to kill layer twos. Um, quite the contrary, actually. They are very very complementary. Um, yeah, and also um, one thing that I like IMX specifically a lot is. As far as I know, they are the only ETH native uh, layer two for NFTs and like play to earn this kind of stuff. That's a actual layer two, right? You have the Ronin chain, but Ronin chain you can think of it more like Polygon. I think that's the design. Is it's a, it's a side chain? They can market it as side chain. They can have tons of support. Right, um, they can try to not do hostile takeover, support all the, the infrastructure. But in, at the end, Polygon is is another chain, right? It's not it's not ETH layer two. Um, I think Ronin is very similar to that. Um, so when you let's say you have a NFT on on ETH and you want to keep your NFT on ETH because it's the most secure, it's very difficult to transfer to Polygon. And still say, okay, like it's the same level of security. That's quite difficult. But if you transfer to optimism, technically that's that's pretty good. That's like the same security as ETH because it's a true layer two. Now, optimism and, and arbitrum, these layer twos are not designed for um NFTs. They're they're not great because of the challenge period, because of the optimistic roll-up way where you have to just assume that there's no constant keep up of um, the asset uh, on the base chain. So when you want to um, get your uh, base, like your, let's say an NFT back on the layer one chain on ETH back, you have to wait a very long period of time. You have to wait seven days for the challenge period. So. By design, optimistic rollups are not good for NFTs and play to earn. The true way to do it, right? Um, the flow for play to earn. This is like the play to earn future that I see. Is firstly, you need the actual chain to be like really secure to hold like let's say a million dollar asset, right? If you have this like uh, what's a good play to earn? Let's say you have a Star Atlas ship that's worth a million dollars like a mothership right you don't want that to be on bsc or polygon because the chain yeah i don't know i don't know if the provenance is strong enough to hold a million dollars of an nft asset uh so if you develop on those chains they might not be around in like three years but if your mothership worth a million dollars is on eth like that's very very convincing right but ETH, you cannot have a mothership on ETH and then the play to earn logic on Polygon and have that cross chain. That is extremely difficult, right? When you want to either transfer the asset over or like have it act as collateral and sign a message on ETH chain and say like, I want to do this action on Polygon, very, very difficult, right? Um, Ronin does that for Axis. But like you have to transfer the assets over anyways. And like if one Axie is worth a million dollars, I don't know if I would trust the Ronin chain, right? Over a very long period of time. Um, obviously, Ronin is pretty good for this already. But, um, and this is like one of the things that's really bullish for Axie is like they can onboard a bunch of um, projects that want to build NFTs that live on ETH, but uh, have gameplay logic on Ronin chain. Like another bullish case for Axie. But again, a very, very limited set of networks that support this kind of logic. Where your main asset lives on ETH, your play to earn, your game game logic lives on another chain. And that bridge or whatever the concept is, is trustless. The real solution, I think it's it's um Immutable X, and I think it's um, the future version of Immutable X. The current Immutable X, um, when they launch, um, 
he is like um still a bridge where you can send your assets over and you can play there and then you can send it back and it's ETH native right so you will not lose your assets it's even when it's on immutable x it's going to be backed by the security of eth however um there's no like really good integration there yet so you cannot say um deploy like whatever smart contract arbitrarily on immutable x you have to do that on eth but the future version the future for metaverse true play to earn that's fast and secure like with provenance on ETH at the same time is ZK rollups and ZK sync and um it's not optimistic rollup so the only yeah the, the true player that's doing this is like uh Starkware and ZK sync and immutable X so um this will not be ready it will probably be like when ETH2 sharding actually comes out. This is like very future state, but if you want to have both decent security, like such that you know anytime like you have your provenance of your mothership worth a million dollars and you can do stuff like microtransactions on a mothership, that's very future state. Um, but I don't think that will be very multi-chain. Because I don't want a million dollar asset to live on any other chain other than Ethereum. I don't trust their provenance. I, I don't trust that Bitcoin, BSC will be around for like three or four years for my collectible NFT worth million dollars to live on there. I don't want it like that. I want it to be on ETH. Because ETH has that much longer history that... I trust that its state is not going to be majorly forked where I lose it. Versus BSC, I don't know. I don't know. Polygon, I don't know. Right. Both because how centralized it is and because like it doesn't have that long of a state where there's so many assets, like even CryptoPunks lives on there. And like just think of the implications of forking board apes and CryptoPunks, like forking the chain, having a split, hard fork. And you have two versions of CryptoPunks. That would be a nightmare. Nobody would do that. But on BSC, yeah, it's not that not that bad, right? <laughs> like you CZ can just go to all the DeFi protocols, Pancake, and say, ah, you know what? Let's like go all get together and figure out like, okay, like this is the fork we're going to do. On ETH, you cannot reach that kind of consensus. You you cannot have two versions of everything. So the provenance is very strong. On BSC, I don't think so. So yeah, I while I do think DeFi is multi-chain, I don't know if Metaverse, um, specifically the core NFT asset is going to be multi-chain. I don't know. So yeah, uh, bit of a rant, but yeah, that's that's like a bit of fundamental thesis. Yeah. Um, Did you notice bullish divergence on weekly chart of Bitcoin dominance? Um, I don't think that's even possible, but okay. <laughs> Is that a question at all? Where is the bullish divergence? How do you look at... A... I can tell you that like, I, I know where the bullish divergence you're referring to is, but it's not on a weekly chart. It's probably on like daily or four hour, right? Like, yeah, I notice it. Sure. Like right here. This is probably a bullet divergence. If you just bring up RSI. Yeah, bullish divergence. Nice. Like. Not even. No, this is not a bullish divergence. Um, I don't know what. What do you want me to say, bro? Like, <laughs> what, what are you talking about? You don't mean give me a chart. You don't give me where the divergence is. You don't tell me where the indicator is. <laughs> like, what is the question? It just tells me, like, you don't you know what the fuck you're talking about. So it's time to dislike and time to unfollow, bro. Like, let me block you. Bye. Um, yeah, like, I, I don't, I don't, 
I don't need that kind of shit. Um, that's what Paul Strain is doing, forking ETH, double your NFT collection. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how that will go, you know? I really don't know how that will go. Um, I was in the sacrifice, but I, I don't know. I, it's just so wild. Um, what about Tron? We haven't heard, heard anything about Justin. Yeah. What about it? Like, there's not much. Not much in there, right? Um, thought is good. Parachains are coming. Get in the parachains. Um, thoughts on your ecosystem and upcoming projects. Good, man. What can I tell you? Like, if you're going to ask questions, be please be more specific. Um, I know that you like people like to ask this way. Like, hey, like uh, I heard this uh, newer thing is hot. Please tell me how I can make money here. Um, I'm not going to answer those kind of questions because, like, if you have a specific question as to like, oh, like when do you think this is and like price or which project is this good or bad? Like, do they have events and this and that? Have you heard of this? What do you think about this? Are you getting this in this or not? Good. But thoughts on, if you start a question with thoughts on, I will not answer because that's just, it's a, you have not done enough research and we cannot talk. Uh, yeah. I'm happy to make to discuss, but I'm not happy to just hold your hand and teach and tell you what to do, right? Uh, yeah. Do you think second layer protocols will matter after ETH upgrade? Again, no. I uh, just <laughs> uh, rewind back the video 15 minutes and you'll see uh, they will for sure matter. They're complementary. They are not competitors. What next for the DAO? Um, just continue doing what we're doing, right? Like providing alpha, um, doing more quests. We have quite a few quests lined up where people can earn bacon and earn project tokens. Um, yeah, that's kind of that. Like. Get more members, talk about it on Twitter, talk about it on TikTok, do live streams, uh, make people realize that like these, like uh, spell, we were super early on that. And if you were in a DAO, the alpha was crazy. I think this mirror circle is going to be pretty good alpha. Um, Climate Owl, we made good alpha. Squid, we made good alpha. Um, Anubis, we got rugged, but I'm still following, right? Um, just like straight up, right? Uh, Temple, right? We've been following Temple for like two months. Uh, it's really good alpha. I give like exactly like uh, what the valuation is, like follow you every day, right when they launch, right? How, we can talk about how you can get into the opening ceremony. Yeah, that's that's what the DAO is. That's a, helping each other and like really giving them top alpha, right? That doesn't necessarily have to mean like we're going to be a billion dollar worth of bacon, but yeah. What's NFT incubator meant to be exactly? Is it still on the cards? Not currently. So that was when um, NFT launch launches were not so scammy. I was like six months ago. At the current period, nobody is making profits off of NFT like collectible launches. No collectors are making money off of those. So we don't want to do them because they're not profitable. Not even for for the members. Uh, so yeah, we're not doing that right now because it's not a good project. Um, it's not useful. Uh, it doesn't really make anybody money. So yeah. Uh, what's yes, like even private sales um, as part of pools don't really make that much money right now. Um, because the kind of deals are really shit. Um, we are trying to do do it kind of the quest way where let's say if there are private sales and we can make it very tied into the quest where um, everyone have to learn about it and like you have to pass the quiz, you have to do the quest in order to join the private sale. Like that could be something interesting. For that, we can get like pretty higher caliber of projects, but we don't want to be a DAO where like, 
oh, we just show stuff on Twitter, show stuff on TikTok, let everyone go retweet and like, you know, join this campaign, join their Telegram, spam everywhere to get a private sale so then we can dump. I've seen that happen. We've done it with NFT tech. I've seen a lot of our members even specifically asking, why didn't we get this early? Like I wanted to dump right out listing. Those are not the type of projects we want to work with because that's not, that's not investing. That's literally pump and dumping. Like we don't want to do that. So yeah, um, we want to do what's profitable and also Technically speaking, the more legit ones are way more profitable. So yeah, currently what we can do is like the secondary market alpha and these LBPs that anyone can get in. We'll like walk you through it, make sure you don't miss it. That's more than enough. Um, but yeah, we want to work with the kind of projects that like do more fair launches. And with this quest system, we think like, yeah it will be way better um so uh, so that we can the project we work with are, are higher caliber the it won't turn into a pump and dump and members will have higher profit margin and the projects can also reap benefits from partnering with us because they have to go through quests because all of our members will have to believe in it yeah, that's that's kind of the model that's way better as part of a DAO. Yeah. NFT tech, unfortunately, like literally every single investor in that got scammed. Yeah, that's just what it is. Like I personally lost like 30k, I think. Yeah, it is what it is. Um favorite NFT ever and why? Punks. Punks by far. Uh why bacon is not moving for a while your plan to boost it i'm not here to boost bacon prices so you can sell it like oh buy it today i will boost it tomorrow so you can sell it what the fuck is that <laughs> join our dow right like membership is very cheap right you take the bacon you stake it or you farm it provide liquidity you help the dow and you get a lot of early alpha like the stuff we talk about and every day we post Bitcoin analysis, right? So you can know for sure when Bitcoin is breaking out and you can, Wonka is doing daily altcoin analysis, right? That's the fundamentals of it. I'm not going to go out there and like pump um, bacon. Obviously, the material we have I think the timing is right to post about them a lot because DAO narratives with Pebble DAO with information token, it's good. But I'm not gonna fucking boost your portfolio. That's not my what my job is. What my job is is like get our what our content is, the kind of alpha we have out there. Yeah, we're actively doing that. Um Yeah, I think so far, like I'm pretty happy with where we've gotten. And I think a lot of the people have been washed out where they're like not members. But yeah, we're, we're at a really good position to like really start to ramp up. Yeah. Um, how about to buy a Dow Punk? Why would we do that? <laughs> Why would we do that? uh we can okay uh, he, something we can do is like party bid yeah there, there are a lot of stuff we can do with uh the dow where um if there are clearly kind of really good nfts um that are can generate revenue for us for everyone involved we can do a party bid uh i've thought about that for like squid but squid interface isn't supported um, but yeah, stuff like that, but definitely not a punk. Like why would you, punk is not a productive asset. It just sits there. Um, and it's not like we can distribute the punk and like everyone that puts money in can make money. That's not, 
if there are those opportunities, make sure you propose them. We will do them. But punk is not the way. Mr. Maybez is live. Could I get a quick summary? No, you cannot. Uh, just, <laughs> just go back and watch it. Uh, there are no new thoughts gems. The ones I'm doing is just Moonbeam, Akala, Astar. That's it. Uh, GMX is good. Uh, I'm a fan of GMX. Yeah. Derivatives on Arbitrum is a good narrative. It's a good use case. Updated roadmap to re reflect that. Yeah, yeah, we're doing that. We're doing that. Um, okay. What do you think the price will be over the next few days? I don't know, man. I mean, I, I know, but we talked about it like twice already. So, <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll give, um, I think may, when the LBP launches, I'll probably give, uh, I'll write the numbers down like uh, what my targets are in in the Discord, in Bacon Strams. Yeah, that, that would make sense. Um, you think the ratio is going to be on Dot Moonbeam? I know it depends on how much people adopt the pair chain. Yeah, yeah. I know that too. So that's what I think. How am I supposed to know? <laughs> How's that relevant? <laughs> like, I don't know. It can be 0 0.1, it could be 1 million. I don't know. I really don't know. They can raise 10 million, they can raise 10 billion. Anything's possible. Like, why would we try to do that? Why 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 talk about why talk about it that way? That's such a meme. Is Pokedex better play than PokeSwap? I don't have an opinion. I have I I've seen both. I've tried both. Both are pretty good. I have no opinion. I've, I've actually, I know both teams. They're both good teams. Yeah. Um, okay, I think that's about it. I think questions are kind of getting pretty weird, uh, which is a good time to wrap it up. Uh, let's see. What's your... What's your thought? I'm I am wrong to take the all time high of Joel for starting take profit for a small market like this. I'm afraid of small ass volatility. Sometimes all time high is good. Also good indicators to buy. I'm confused. <laughs> this is this is a decently good question. Yeah. So usually, um, first thing is your position sides should not be too much that um let's say let's say you buy joe at like three dollar fifty right it drops to 2.5 if even though it's within the same volatile range right if you have put in such a big amount of your portfolio that when it drops a, even an expected amount that you are getting sweaty and you're saying oh no no like i lost a, too much of my portfolio the next time it goes to break even you want to sell and exit that is a bad strategy, but it it not because that's the right thing to do, but because you put in too much in the first place, right? So first thing you need to do is limit your position size so that on these expected volatile dips, you are completely fine, right? So that's the first thing you do. Second is when it comes up to test the previous all-time high and breaks, right? That's actually when you want to increase your previously small position, right? Break of previous all-time high is good uh, good time to enter because that's when the next rally starts. But most people take profit and like, um, what's it called? Uh, sell at a break even at previous all-time high why because they usually formal in just at the previous all-time high at too much of you know their portfolio and then they just like they, they cannot they cannot take it 
and they just like rather break even because they're the the position size is wrong right so if in the first place right when it's ranging and hasn't broken out and your your position size is small enough the breakout retest is a time to double down yes but that has to be based on the assumption that initially your position size isn't that large anyways right so yeah uh two part to that question but yes um usually you don't want to be taking profit when it just breaks previous all-time high that's that's not that's not the right thing to do when the run starts usually you double down most people don't do this and most people do the opposite and they say oh why would you buy high and sell low well you're not right you are buy high and selling higher right because the break of previous all time let's take, let's take a chart and make it a bit clearer right so uh let's say bitcoin yeah so let's say within this range right if you are to take a early long position on bitcoin right before it breaks above the previous all-time high here right you can't do too convincing kind of play because you don't know like if this run up is going to stop here and like do this or if it's going to do that or if it's actually going to carry on and like break out retest right you don't know so this will be an early kind of smaller position right so in this case if you entered too heavily right let's say you enter here and it has a healthy dip like that where it drops 10 percent even though it respects the previous higher high respects the previous higher low but drops 10 percent the people that are super aggressive and greedy will be sweaty on this kind of 10 percent play such that when it comes up to retest the previous all-time high again they would say okay no 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 like i've been sweating for half half a month i need to break even i need to exit i cannot take this anymore that's why most people end up selling right here but if you're doing it right right when you take an early position like that in this kind of range you you don't want to be putting all your position in instead you wait right you you wait till you do some here and then you wait till the breakout retest and then you double down here because it starts trending when the breakout retest completes right and when it starts trending yes right this um price level here is higher than here yes but the point is not to always buy at the super low price and sell at a super high price because you can argue the same like, oh, why didn't you buy a fucking $3,000, right? If you always take that kind of argument, nobody would buy at 60K, at 50K. But you know we're not going below 30. Well, you know we're not going to go to 20K, 10K again, right? So why aren't you saying that, oh, no, why would you buy Bitcoin at 60K? Like 10K is cheap because you're not going to get that opportunity anymore, right? Well, similar kind of thing here also, right? When you zoom in to, let's say, daily, and you break previous all-time high here, right? Let's say you have, you want to enter Bitcoin. You buy a little bit here, right? Uh, because you think it's decently cheap, but it hasn't really gone, like, started its next rally yet right when it does start to do this and price is here you can buy again you can double down why is that it's because the chance of it dipping below here is much lower than before and then the chance of it going below here is way lower than when it was here right so that's the same thing as saying like oh like i'm buying 40k dip I'm not buying 10k because 10k has been so long ago that i don't think it's gonna happen 
So I'm willing to buy because this dip is now a dip, even though price is technically 40K is higher than 10K, but you don't expect 10K to be revisited because the uptrend has gone up so much longer that it, it, like it now 40K is a dip, right? Same thing if on the daily time frame when it can, you can break above previous all time high and dip to retest the previous all time high. Now this becomes a dip, right? Right here. So you don't want to always like think, oh, I'm buying high. Why? Like it was 50K last week. High cannot buy here. And then next week when it's at 60K, when it's at 70, you say, oh, no, it was 60K last week. I cannot buy here. No, the point is not to buy at absolute levels of high and low. It's to buy dips on an uptrend, right? First, the uptrend has to be clear. And then what is the cheap point on the uptrend? It's the dips, right? So that's what you do. That's that's buying low, selling high. So yeah, like apply it to Joe, right? Currently, is the uptrend clear yet? No, it's not clear. But if it goes back to $4 and break, let's say get to $4.50 and comes back down to retest $4, the uptrend would be clear again, in which case $4 becomes a dip. Currently, it's not a dip, right? $4 seems very expensive because we're trading at $2.50. But you buy right now, you cannot say very, very confidently that we are going to start, start the uptrend. So your position size can't be too big. And same as when it starts the uptrend, you don't want to be like putting all your position there. So. You can take an early bet at 250, and then when it breaks the all-time high and starts to retest all-time high, it starts a new uptrend. Four dollar becomes a dip. You double down there because the uptrend has to establish itself. That's that's trading. Um. So yeah, that's what I do. Um, that's <laughs> what most people don't do because they buy in too early because they they're looking at two dollar fifty and they're drawing meme uptrends when they're not there yet and saying that this could happen and then they buy at 250 it drops to two dollars because they've all in all of a sudden that small dip they're super sweaty so then next time they go to two dollar to 250 they break even they take a break even and then uptrend when the uptrend actually establishes itself because they don't know what they're doing they would say, oh, fuck, how could I sell at break even? Now it's too high. They look at $4. No, I was in at $2.50. It's at $4. No, I cannot buy this anymore. And then they're like, wait, wait, wait. They don't buy. Even though $4 breakout retest is a dip when the uptrend establishes itself. And then they wait till like $8. And they, they FOMO again <laughs> because they like are confident enough at $8 to FOMO in. And then it dips to 7 And then they rinse and repeat. Eventually, they go broke. You see the pattern? So that's, yeah, that comes from a lot of experience. And the best way to avoid doing that is to control your position sides in the first place, control your risk in the first place, right? So, yeah, like that journey I just described, I've gone through it so many times, like in 2017, 2018. That like I, I just know what's gonna happen, and if I feel that way, I know that oh, like it's not necessarily my analysis is wrong. It's just I'm oversizing, so I, I downsize, and all of a sudden I'm I'm chill, you know. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, um, how do you decide when to sell in an uptrend run? Yeah, so also good question. So let's say we take um this here right let's say you this is bitcoin let's say like you waited you, like you don't want to buy this like kind of falling knife ugly pattern right but you saw this range right from 30k to 40k and then you waited till it breaks out right so it does this very convincingly with volume and then it comes back down to retest kind of this level, right? You see, right around 40K. And you said, oh, yeah, here I buy, right? Because breakout retest, right? Uh, break of range, 
retest. Good, I buy here. And then let's say you bought there. And then when do you sell? Or at least in the very short term, if you're a trader, when do you sell? Well, you wait until if you are like trading short term, I would say the first time that it printed lower high there, that's a signal to sell, right? Because if you're trading, um, this is a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, uh, pretty iffy already. Technically lower high, you see? This is high, this is lower high. Uh, sorry, this is the first higher low, this is the lower low. So once it makes a lower low and a lower high, this is where you sell. So your trade would be from here to here, right? Uh, which would be like, here is the breakout retest, ride the higher high, higher lows, and then boom, lower high, a lower low, lower high. Here you sell, right? And then, because you know the at least the short-term trend has broken, that would be a 25% trade, right? So if you are an tr active trader, that's what you would do. Obviously, this is Bitcoin and we're bull market and I, I don't even do that. That's that's dumb. I would never do that. Um, so then you can zoom out and say, okay, like if you're writing medium term trade, what, what are you doing, right? Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, still higher low, right? So continue doing this. But let's say what, what would be the bearish case for this to be broken, right? That would be higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high. This we need to be broken, right? And then on the shoulder here, below the previous higher high, this is where we saw in the medium term. So this is why I'm so confident in Bitcoin right now. It's just there's so much room that of buffer that like it's just pretty much not gonna happen. So yeah. Um, but in any uptrend, right, whether you're short-term trading, long-term, very long-term, you can even make this out to weekly and say, okay, what is there, right? Here's the previous higher high, right? We're kind of testing the higher high. Here's higher low, here's higher low, right? So if we break out from here, great. We need to respect here, right? So very very long term let's say the long term bull market where would the current bottom line be right here right so um if it drops below there on the bounce i probably exit right because not only is that breaking the short term market structure also that would be like kind of double top right if it happens very very unlikely for that to happen right um yeah so that's how you would sell in an uptrend um people saying that they can know oh like when just like randomly as this is trending up and doing this like oh they know like this here is the top nobody knows nobody knows so for sure you will miss quite a bit of like this profit right now if this was the top you would miss this much 33 percent from the top um if let's say it does goes to 100k is the top right and let's say it does like a, this this goes to 100k right and then tops out drops below this lower high a uh, higher low right then uh, I need to zoom this. Yeah. Then you will be missing out on again 20% uh, 30% from the top, right? So people saying that they can sell the top, no they can't. But if you are patient enough, you if and you know how to analyze the trends, you can recognize when an uptrend has stopped, can you sell decently well around like, like average selling like in the periods of like when the uptrend is stopping yes you can you can can you sell at the absolute top no you cannot 
So yeah, um, this applies to weekly, this applies to daily, this applies to very short-term uh, day trade, right? Same thing, so yeah. Um, uh, you, yeah, you can't predict the top or the bottom, but yeah, if the trend has broken, where the higher low has broken and you made a lower low, you can, that will confirm that the uptrend has stopped. And that will not be the absolute top, but that will be like 30% from the top. So that's not bad, really not bad, right? So that, that's the pretty much the best you can do. Yeah. Um, No one in TA has a crystal ball. Yeah, no one in TA has a crystal ball. Um, but you can react, right? If you are keen enough and you know what to watch for, you can react. Yes. Um, um, Scarecrow volume current fund. I have no idea what that is. What, what the fuck is that? Wrap and memo. Okay, this is time. Scarecrow volume group finance risk comparison with borrowing and restaking. Oh, yeah. If you're doing a vault and you're collateralizing it, you're taking a leverage position, right? Make sure you understand that. Like if you borrow against it and then you buy more, restake, you have leverage. So if price goes down, your position could get liquidated, right? So make sure you understand that. Or not, not liquidated, but you might not be able to get your collateral back if, um, actually, can you get, yeah, you can you can get liquidated, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, so I, I wouldn't do that. Mm. Okay, so yeah, I think um, it's a good stream. It's a good, 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 uh, good session there, I think. uh in the way up take profit and weigh the retest on the all-time high the price action changed for a higher price but not the trading strategy yeah 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 exactly because like when it's above 4.5 you wouldn't be expecting to be oh like i'm waiting joel to come back down to 2.5 and buy because if it starts if it breaks above four and starts uptrending you don't want it to be at 2.5 again because that means something is wrong and your analysis is wrong. That's frankly, that's time to stop loss. So yeah, um, you don't always want things to be cheap, right? And to buy cheap because if things always stay cheap, they're kind of not growing. They're not doing it right. So you want it to be an uptrend and buy when people are just selling in short-term dips. I have no idea what the Ergo platform is, unfortunately. So can't can answer. Um. Okay, I think that's about it. We're kind of running out of questions and it's been two hours. So thank you everyone for joining. Uh, has been a pretty good stream today, I would say. Yeah, pretty fun stuff. Um, love doing TA, love doing analysis. Yeah, if you want to be part of our DAO, join Bacon DAO. Um, you can earn rewards by learning about like Polkadot projects, Pokeswap. Uh, we're working with other projects as well. Um, you can learn TA. We have like daily analysis for Bitcoin alts. Uh, we have all the trades, right, for for these kind of gems for mirror swap, uh, for Temple stuff like that. Not just myself, but like other contributors as well. And you can talk with everyone else based on like what kind of uh, niche you're into, right? Polkadot, Terra Luna, Atom, BSC, farming, low cap NFTs, gaming, metaverse, whatever it is, right? So. That's it. Um, thank you guys for joining. I'll see you guys again on uh, Wednesday, same time. And uh, yeah, I think Wednesday we'll have analysis on Mirror Circle because the LBP will be live and we can go over it all together. Exciting. Um, yeah. Thanks for joining. Uh, I'll end it here. Bye, guys. Have a good one.